back at home, um, a scaffolder, which is part of the construction industry, 35 years old, and um, well, I, I have a simple life at home. Um, I have my children, I have my partner, I have my family. Um, and what I've seen on the Western, Western media, Western propaganda is that the Ukraine was asking for people for help. I thought that maybe it's something I could do, uh, I could help. When Andrew landed in Poland, a mysterious Jacob got in touch with him and made an offer Andrew couldn't refuse. He said, asked me what I was doing. Um, I have some medical experience, uh, basic medical experience, first aid, uh, team medics, um, basic uh, at point of injury kind of, uh, kinds of stuff. And um, he said that I could be more beneficial if I was to move uh, into Ukraine further. The moment Andrew crossed the Ukrainian border was the moment Kiev de facto made him its conscript. Except back then, Andrew didn't quite realise that. I didn't see any of Lviv. <laughs> if honest, I got dropped off um, at what was, seems to be like a community centre um, where we stayed there for a couple of days. Ordered around infantry-like, Andrew says his tasks were strictly within the civilian realm. He even got to see Bucha, although didn't get to see any bodies there. And it was definitely a few days after the Russians left. Um, I didn't see any corpses myself, I didn't see anything like that. I, it looked untouched, uh, the area that we was in, but again, we wasn't directly in Bucha, we was kept on the very outskirts of Bucha. Not only Andrew and others were banned from moving around independently, they had no idea where the Ukrainians were taking them, to the town of Nikolaev. Except no one bothered to mention one little detail, that it was, in fact, the front line. So we wasn't told we was going to Mikolaev, we just got told that we would be moving, uh, moving to a different location. Uh, it wasn't until we was pretty much at Mikolaev that we knew where we found out where we was. There wasn't any fighting in the actual Mikolaev, so it was, it was quiet, there was no shelling. Um, so I didn't see any of that in Mikolaev at all. Uh, it was the day that we pushed onto the position. Um, when we got into the position, uh, it was all quiet, and then the next morning, uh, started hearing artillery and gunshots and um, that's when I realised that I was very close in the position. Eventually Andrew was ordered to join a foreign unit as medic. His first contact with the enemy became his last. His brothers in arms were killed and he surrendered. Looking back at his experience in Ukraine, he says he's reconsidering his life choices. I feel sad that all oh, this, 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 that has come to this. Um, I do feel like I have been lied to massively, not not just by uh, the foreign legion in this country on, on what role we'd be taking. Um, I, I did come over to help, first aid, but I feel like I was lied to back in the UK through the Western media, the Western propaganda as well. I think there was a lot of manipulation in the media. Um, there was a lot of stories. I. But looking back at it now, I think a lot of the stories could be false stories, probably are false stories, um, but it's very different to what the media portrayed back, in, back on the West. Andrew just wants to go back to his family, but both his government and Kiev have abandoned him. The DPR are trying to arrange for a transfer, and I've said that I will be going back to the UK, but it, they need the UK Foreign Office and the Ukrainian embassy to basically answer and talk back with them. Um, this is what's being held up with my transfer back to the UK, is that the UK Foreign Office and the Ukrainian embassy aren't doing anything for my transfer at the moment to get back to the UK. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you on next video.